Hey everyone, welcome to Connect. Your Connect small group is gonna get together in five minutes. Your Connect small group will get together in four minutes. Say hi to your small group leader. Your Connect small group gets together in three minutes. Start cleaning up your games. You've only got two minutes left. It's almost time, just one minute left.
We're gonna dance. We're gonna sing. We're gonna get real loud. Let our voices ring. We're gonna party. We're having fun with Jesus Christ. He's God's only son. Now everybody, from the front to the back, put your hands in the air and clap, clap, clap. Seeing old friends, making new friends. Here with Jesus, we're connected. Hey everyone, I'm Tony. And I'm Kat. Welcome to Connect. We are so happy you're here. It is great to see you. But before we get to the fun stuff, we've got a few rules to go over. These rules are here to help you and keep you safe. Kat, do you want to start? I'd love to. First up, rule number one. Listen to your small group leaders. Respect them and obey what they tell you to do. The grown-ups are here to help you, look out for you, and keep you safe. Next up. Rule number two. Be a good friend. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Remember the way that Jesus treated others. He always used kind words and showed respect and love to those around him. He'll help you do that too. Be on the lookout for people that are here for the first time. If you're a good friend to them, it'll make their day. We've covered the first two rules. You know what that means. It's time for rule number three. Have, Have fun. fun. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Me too. It's always so much fun getting to come to Connect and spend time with your friends. All right, let's put on our glasses and see what's coming up next. I already wear glasses. Oh. Are you excited that it's time to give our tithes and offerings? You know it! I love this time when we can return to God some of what He's given us. It can be confusing why we even give offering. Maddie wrote to us with a question about that. She says, God created everything. He even created money, so why does He want mine? I've thought about that before, Maddie. She's right that everything in the whole world, including money, is already His. Giving our tithes and offerings isn't just about God wanting our money. What God wants is our hearts. He wants our hearts to trust Him with everything, including money. When we're obedient with our giving, it shows that we trust Him. In our hearts, it might feel like we should keep all of our money to buy more stuff. But God wants our hearts focused on Him, not on stuff. When we give a tithe and offering to God first, it reminds your heart that He is most important above all other things. Thanks for your question, Maddie, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to trust, trust him, him and put God, God first. first. You know what? There was a time when I didn't really understand what the word worship meant, but then my friends at Connect HQ showed me it's simple. It's showing God how much you love him for who he is and what he's done. And guess what? We get to do that right now through singing and dancing. So everyone, get up on your feet and let's connect to God together. When night has fallen, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength 
I need a nap. Can you just, can you just give me a minute? We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. How long was I asleep? 30 minutes, an hour, a week? 30 seconds. Cool, cool. sorry. It's just been a really, really weird day. But I know we have a postcard to answer, so let's get to it. Dear Connect HQ, I know God is good and everything he made was perfect. So why do we have to deal with bad stuff? Where did it come from? Signed, David. Excuse me, just one second. <sighs> Coffee, that's better. David, that's a really important question. Bad stuff does come up in life, for all of us. And it's normal to wonder where that bad stuff comes from. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this reminds me of a little situation that happened earlier here at Connect HQ. Take a look. Oh no. What now? Oh, oh, oh. Captain Alyssa! Jaden, what's going on? Here. No! Don't! Why? Ah, what is that? What's going on? We can't stay here! Follow me! Ugh. Cotton balls! Cotton balls! Get your fresh cotton balls here! No earmuffs, that's okay. We got plenty of cotton balls to spare. Alyssa! Alyssa, could I interest you in some cotton balls? They may not be earmuffs, but they'll protect your ears all the same. No, no, no. Don't bother. We're here. If you wish to be granted an audience with King Mike, you must surrender your smartwatch. What in the world? <sighs> Seriously? Ah! Alyssa! So good to see you. Thought you had been lost to the noise. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna need someone to tell me what's going on right now. Welcome to the Lower Lands, otherwise known as the Basement. Ah, uh, might I interest you in some food? We only serve the finest of quietest of foods. Would you like scrambled eggs, yogurt, smoothie? Mike! Okay, fine. Ah. Uh, so do you remember how you told Professor Marie not to work on the iWorship app? Yes, because the last time someone messed with it, it drove everyone nearly crazy. I remember. Yeah, so here's what happened. Dot convinced Professor Marie to try to fix iWorship. She thought if they could get it up and running, it would be a great surprise for everyone. At first, it seemed like the update was a success. iWorship started working like we always hoped it would. But then something happened. Some sort of glitch caused iWorship to fail over and over again. So that sound you're hearing is the sound the iWorship app makes every single time it fails, and nobody knows how to fix it. King Mike uncovered a trove of earmuffs just after the first iWorship fail and brought us all to safety. Since then, we've gathered all the foam insulation we could find to protect ourselves from the noise, but we figure it'll only last for so long. Okay, but you guys do realize that all of this is crazy. Well, it's only as crazy as when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Come again. Well, I just finished archiving that Bible link when the iWorship app started acting up. And once I heard what happened, I couldn't help but think that these two situations are pretty similar. Here, I'll show you. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God. Through history and poetry. 
is alive. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the whole world. The first two people, Adam and Eve, lived with God in the Garden of Eden. Everything there was perfect and good. God told Adam and Eve they could eat from any tree in the garden but one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If they ate the fruit from that tree, then they would die. So time passed, and one day a serpent found Eve. He told her God had lied. Eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil wouldn't kill her, it would make her like God. In that moment, Eve saw the fruit looked good and trusted the serpent instead of God. She took the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some fruit to Adam, and he ate it too. When they did, evil entered into God's good world. Adam and Eve felt uncomfortable feelings they had never felt before. They were embarrassed and afraid. They tried to hide from God and make clothes for themselves, but that didn't make them feel any better. But Adam and Eve weren't the only ones affected by evil entering the world. Everything changed that day. Things started growing older, getting sick, and dying. Adam and Eve had to leave their home in the garden. There wasn't anything they could do to fix what they had done. But that's not the end of the story. God had a good plan to make things right, and he did it years later through his son, Jesus. When God made the world, everything was good. And then Adam and Eve chose to trust the serpent instead of God, and that's when evil entered the world. That's how all this bad stuff started. Everything changed in that moment. Creation started growing old and dying. People started deciding what was right and wrong without God. And they got it wrong a lot. They made choices that hurt others and the earth. And that's just like what happened with the iWorship app. Instead of trusting you, Professor Murray and Dot decided to start the app back up again. And everything's been bad since. It's only going to get worse. No. What? Huh? Okay, I know everything got bad after Adam and Eve sinned, and I know things are bad right now, but that doesn't mean they're gonna stay that way. There's hope. Where do we get it? Dot. Cotton balls? Can I interest you in some cotton balls? Snap out of it, Dot. Are you listening to me? Alyssa, I am so sorry. I really messed up. I thought we were doing something good, but it turned out to be so wrong. Everything's gonna be okay, but... I need you to take me to Professor Marie. <gasps> but you can't. You wouldn't. You can't go there. You'll be lost to the noise. The noise. Okay, first of all, that's not a real thing. Second of all, give us back our smartwatches. Yours <laughs> fine. And I need two pairs of earmuffs. Hey! Ah, one for me and one for Dot. <laughs> ah, that's better. Are you sure about this? Absolutely. Let's go. Professor Marie! <gasps> oh, Captain Alyssa, I'm so sorry. I've done everything I can think of to fix the app. Nothing's worked. All hope is gone. That's not true. 
Don't you remember the video you made last week? The one for Darcy? <laughs> I'm serious. Pull it up on your computer, put on your headphones, and watch it. Nothing lasts forever. As scientists study the natural world, we've observed that this is part of life. Rivers dry up, forests catch on fire, and people we love can get sick. If that's all we have to look forward to in life, it would make living pretty sad, wouldn't it? But there's good news. The Bible tells us we have something better waiting for us in the future. 2 Peter 3, 13. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Godliness will live there. So what is this verse saying? What does it mean when it talks about a new heaven and a new earth? This is something God has promised us. One day God will make everything new. All of life will be good again, forever. Rivers will never go dry, forests will never catch fire, and none of us will ever get hurt or sick. Death will be no more. Once God returns, He will live here with us. Everything will be set right. And until then, we can make choices to make things new now like deciding to become friends with Jesus and looking to Him to help us know what's right and what's wrong. And that is something that can give all of us hope for the future. See, Professor Murray, there's still hope for the future. You said so yourself. <laughs> you're, you're right, but I still don't think I can fix it. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait around until God comes back and rescues us. I better go get my cotton balls. No. When we choose to follow God, He gives us skills and gifts. We can use them to make things better now until God comes back and makes things new once and for all. This is one of those times we can. How? We don't need to fix I worship. We just need to turn it off. Is that possible? Uh, I think I know the code that can do that. Anything you need, I'm here to help. Let's do it. going up there. Do you think they made it? No way of knowing. Oh. It's getting closer. It sounds like it's getting faster, too. How much longer do you think we have down here? Ah! Ah! Is, is everyone okay? I, I think so. Oh, wait. Wait. Jaden, what are you doing? I think it's gone. It is. It's gone. It is. It's really gone. <laughs> It's <laughs> oh, this great. So, I think we could have our smartwatches back. Or... Is that okay? Yeah. That's amazing. What happened next? It was the moment of truth. I don't think I've ever seen anyone turn the power off with as much gusto as Professor Marie did. It's so crazy to think that that's all it took. There was hope all along, we just couldn't see it. There's always hope. God's creation got hurt by sin, but He's making everything good again. No matter how bad things get, we can trust that He's still at work. God's creation got hurt by sin, but He's making everything good again. I don't ever want to forget that. Alyssa, are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It's just been a really big day. I still have a postcard to answer. I better get to the hub. Like I said earlier, it was a pretty weird day. But David, I think there's a lot we can learn from what happened. Do you remember the verse from Professor Marie's video? Why don't we say it together? 2 Peter 3, 13. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Godliness will live there. So no matter how much bad stuff we see, it's important to remember that God's promised us hope for the future. When God made the world, everything He created was good. But then Adam and Eve trusted the serpent instead of God, and evil entered the world. That's where bad stuff came from. Now, things grow old, get sick, and die. And people make choices that sometimes hurt themselves and others. Those kinds of bad things can make it easy for us to lose hope. But here's the great news. God has a plan to make everything good again. One day, 
God will come back and make all things new. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And until then, we don't have to wait around and do nothing. When we choose to follow God, He gives us gifts and talents that we can use to make things better right here and now. Don't forget, God's creation got hurt by sin, but He's making everything good again. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Why do we even have this many earmuffs? I mean, these are kind of nice. It's like I have two chinchillas on either side of my face. <gasps> oh, you're a good chinchilla. You're a good chinchilla, yes you are. God has a plan to make everything new again, and that includes us. When we choose to follow Jesus, we are given a new heart and a new friendship in Him. If you haven't decided to make Jesus your leader and number one friend, you can make that decision today. All you have to do is remember the ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice? If so, be sure to talk about it with a parent or leader you trust. <laughs> <laughs>